Colin, so tell me about uh, the Gadgeteer program. Okay, the .NET Gadgeteer program is a is a rapid prototyping environment that was developed in Microsoft Research Cambridge for their own uses, actually. Uh, but we find it so so useful for ourselves. We're actually sort of introducing people to it. Uh, in the hopes of finding actually some, some way of getting it out to a broader audience. Okay, it's, so why don't you show me the system? Okay, uh, it's, it's built around a standard, standard available module that's been, uh, that's been uh, added, uh, we've, what we've added is a number of, of sockets to this, and then there's a number of, of modules as well. This is a camera module. Each of the modules has its own electronics on it if it requires any electronics. And it also tells you which sockets it can be plugged into. So this one can be plugged into AC, H, and L. And, and then all on the main board, there's an AC. Or so here's A. Starts with A and ends up at O down okay. there. And so all you have to do is find one of those available and plug it in. Okay. Now the programming model is also very similar. If we go over here, we scroll this up a little bit. And you can see to create a button, for instance, you just declare a, a button type. We all we need to know to instantiate one is that we plugged it into A, and we've added two new uh, events to it. And all of this is, is, is supported in Visual Studio by IntelliSense. So, for instance, uh, I get that do this. No, this is locked down. Okay. But uh, IntelliSense... So, so you can program it in Visual Studio? Yes. Okay. And once you've got your program done, you send it down over USB to the, to the main board, at which point you can continue to debug in Visual Studio. Okay. You set breakpoints, you can look at local variables. It's just like you were debugging something that was running on top of a lap, uh, okay. of your laptop. So it's an extremely powerful uh, programming environment. And so there's a whole bunch of hardware that can be added to it. I see SD slots and XP yeah, range and finders, yeah. Wi-Fi, MP3 players. Uh, you can do general breakout boards or uh, digital I/O things like that. So okay. you have ideas of your own you want to connect in there. Great. You're going to connect it. And then let's go take a look at how people are using it. Okay. So we have what we've done is we've uh, over the last week we created a number of things for people to look at. So here you can see, for instance, an example of a, uh, a remote monitor system. And you can see this is the actual system here. And as you can see the breakout of it here, the modules that were put into it and the, and the case that was created for it. And what this actually does is that it has a camera mounted on a swivel okay. and a display and an SD card. And the servo and so here's the main board. Right. And, and the radio. 3D printed ex um, enclosure for it. Right. This was all done on a 3D printer. Okay. And we have both two radios. We have a, a Zigbee radio and an Ethernet connection. Okay. So with the Ethernet connection, we can send this up to the cloud. You can actually control this from from a web service. Okay. So you can say, I want to move the camera over here. From the Zigbee, the Zigbee is connected to uh, remote sensors. There's okay. one over on that fence over there. All right. And that's telling it what the temperature is. And so the temperature and humidity and things like that would be displayed on the display that we don't those, have Okay, so the display is not on it, but it's also controllable through a web interface, right? Right. right. So here you can see, uh, unfortunately, the wrong picture. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, and I think you can actually, you can actually move the camera from here. Let me try this. And so here you've got a slider for the degree. Yeah. And you can move. Yeah. And then also it's keeping track of the temperature and the, the humidity sensor and the temperature are over, are over there on, on that module over there. And then um, what are these other things that you have here? Well, we did some robotics. So we have a line following robot over there, a robotic arm here. Uh, mostly this is just to show how easy it is to put these together. The, the robot arm actually has a touch interface. Okay. So this is all written in .NET. It's very high level. So this uh, creating things like a touch interface is just a few lines of code. And the last thing we have is uh, the environment, which is SolidWorks, that we uh, that we actually use to uh, to make those cases over there. And what we've done is extended SolidWorks with a number of models of the libraries for the actual modules. So it's extremely easy to bring those modules into your into your design, get them mounted, 
uh, and uh, create these, these great cases. I have no idea. So where can people find out more about this project? There is a, uh, a website. Uh, they can go out to netmf.com. Uh, and follow us there. That is, that is actually the website for the .NET Micro Framework, which is currently available. We are working on making this available, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much, Colin. Thank you.